So I want to start off saying thank you. Yeah. Because same, I'm, same. I'm going through an incredible transition in my life. Good. That's eternal. Wonderful and positive. Yeah. And I feel like I'm on a, I'm riding a wave of allowance. Good. Where I know I'm supposed to be the conductor, but it feels like I'm really just accepting and allowing. You know what you're describing there? Bit by bit, you put it into the vortex and it's been gestating. And the cooperative components have been gathered and the momentum has been building. And so it's in the process of becoming. It's in the process of bursting onto the scene into manifestation. And you're right there and you can feel that. That's the best spot. That's where you just want to be. And then it bursts on and you say, oh, yay. And then you say, now what? Now what? But I haven't reached the now what? Because I've heard you describe so many times that exhilaration of the unfolding. Yeah. And that's where I am right now. I, I literally walked away from what it's I was... It's so delicious if you can savor the incremental part as much as you savor the moment when it bursts into your bank account or whatever. And there are others who are waiting for the bursting into the bank account moment. But for me, I, that is a distant memory. It's really just about following this feeling, yeah. which is amazing yeah. to me. Yeah. And as soon as I... Could you call it a feeling of certainty? Absolutely. Invincibility? Yes. That ride that wave. Yes. Ride that wave. And when you find yourself, and you might, if you talk to other people who are impatient, when people say, thank you for your patience, Esther always says, you must be thinking of others. <laughs> because she likes to keep herself in that on the brink of discovery and manifestation feeling. And it's not a feeling of patience. It's a feeling of anticipation. And I have Abraham to thank for keeping me there more often now. And that's what's allowed this to happen. Just yeah. I do fall off the disc plenty. Right, the people around me, family, I do fall off, but I'm falling off less often and it's lasting longer. And that's cleared the path. It's truly incredible the past couple of weeks as this, it's, I'm forming a new business, which is completely different from what I've done before, but something I've always loved. It's kind of like I did it as a hobby. It was my greatest joy and then went back to what I was doing and finally realized this is my greatest joy. This is what I'm doing for a living. Yeah. And so as soon as I allowed that to happen, all those people are jumping into my path. And do you know why? You know why it's manifesting, the energy is so powerful? It's because you've been launching those rockets and feeding that vortex. And the law of attraction has been gathering the cooperative components. It's gestating and becoming. It's this inevitable thing that is happening. And you're not in the way of it. The only thing that can stop that is you getting in the way of that. Yes, and what's allowing that? Everybody else is blurry. It's just me, my vision, my conviction, my belief. And it's feeling very pure. Yeah. I have to say, for the first time, the last time I remember feeling this way was when I allowed my relationship with my now wife yeah. of 25 years yeah. to happen. I didn't yeah. make a decision. Yeah. I allowed it to happen. You see, so what you're doing, you're doing the best job. I want to speak to our friend who was in the hot seat before about this. You're doing the best job of describing what your work is in the creative process. And your work is to choose and then not point in opposition. That's your work. But to continue to choose, because you choose and then you get more information, and then you choose and then you get more information, and then you choose and then you get more information. So just keep choosing, but don't point in opposition. We said this earlier, but we think it'll hit home with you more now than it did when we said it earlier today. You're never going to get it done. It's never going to be done. And it's really a good thing when you stop needing the manifestation in order to feel good. If you cannot need the manifestation, but you can accept the unfolding now, 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 because even when it bursts in to see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it, it's still not done, as you've discovered with your magnificent relationship with your wife. It's not done. It's not ever going to be done. And I'm only realizing day by day right now how much bigger it can be than I ever imagined. These ideas just keep flowing to me. Bigger than you have imagined. This is so good. Hear this. <laughs> bigger than you have imagined because the path of least resistance will not allow you to see past what you've practiced seeing. But not bigger than you want and not bigger than your inner being is imagined and not bigger than the cooperative components together have caused it to be. It's been revealed, but you are not ready to realize all of it. But isn't that the fun? For years, we've said to Esther, the universe will surprise and delight you. And she argued with us about that for a while. She said, I can see how it could delight me, but how can it surprise me if I'm the one that's put the stuff in the vortex to begin with? And we say, because you can't consider, and it's not because you're defective. You can't consider all of the components of all of the things that are gathered together and what that means. The exponential desire is unfathomable, but it is knowable. It is feelable. It is discernible. I'm feeling proof of that right now. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you for that. There was one little personal um, trivial anecdote that I wanted to bring up with you for a long time. The first time I came to one of these gatherings was, call it seven or eight years ago, and I had only just then started listening to the teachings. I'm a huge fan of all that's put on YouTube. Thank you very much. Um, and I was, after one of the, you know, during one of the segments of, of refreshment, 
all of us were filing to the to the restrooms. It was like a almost like a stream. And I passed Esther in the stream, and she looked right at me and punched me in the arm. <laughs> and I and I wondered with my wife and my sister in law sisters in law. I wondered was that Esther punching me in the arm? Was that Abraham saying, "Finally, you joined us"? <laughs> More likely, Esther. She's a puncher. But truly, thank you for everything. Thank you for today. There we go. Now what? Not that much of an issue for me anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little better at uh, gradually, um, after being steeped in spiritual teachings for like 15 whatever years, um, when I'm getting better at when something just isn't jiving, even if it's from you or someone I highly regard that, Good. you know, I just Good. don't agree with it. <laughs> Good. Because I consider that maybe I'm misinterpreting it or maybe the way I'm seeing it has just served me better yeah. if it feels better and such. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that goes for what just happened here. Great. <laughs> it's good to know. You could take it or leave it. Yeah. And, um, and I guess just this one kind of point of... Uh, you want to miss out on the best thing that's ever happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. If you don't understand that we can see into your vortex, is that, if you don't understand well, that we're infant in intelligence... Well, not, not offering resistance to what you just said. What you just told me about the relationship actually um, gave me more hope. So yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, but just in general, there's just this like kind of one idea that's uh, throwing me for a loop sometimes. I'm like, well, I'm just going to think what I think. Manifestation in general, the, the whole kind of teaching of manifestation, I had a lot of difficulty with for many years doing spiritual stuff. And it was only through the conversation with conversations with God texts that I'm sure you're familiar with and many other people here are, uh, that it really became like this rich, alive thing that I could really yeah. dabble in. Yeah. And... Um, Ask and receive and ask and receive and ask and receive. Yeah, and, and it was just, you know, that everything, I call forth everything in my reality and I bring forth everything. And, uh, and it talked about that in ways that made sense and were very empowering. And eventually, um, it, it basically uh, started saying, you know, like, you can't necessarily know where everything came from, what level of consciousness you attracted it from, but just accept that it's perfect. It's the perfect circumstance for the perfect growth expansion, whatever that you're seeking. That's a good general place to start because you can't receive what you're not ready to receive. But you can keep asking the question and receive more and more specific answers. There is nothing that you can want to know that you do not have the ability to attract in its fullness. So yeah, I believe that I can attract whatever it is I wish to attract. But I guess the, the difficulty that uh, uh, I kind of had was um, that, that particular idea gave me a lot of relief and peace and able to, no matter what happened, to not be like, oh, why did I attract that? Or I need to figure out what part of me attracted that. You know why? But you know what's so good about that? Is because you cannot think your way out of things. Because if you've got a problem that you're trying to think your way out of, your point of attraction is about the problem. So the problem just keeps presenting itself to you in different ways. You cannot think your way out of it. You can feel your way out of it by seeking the relief. Yeah. Yeah, basically the, the emphasis was put on, don't worry about how it came about, your main task is to just, you know, get in alignment, to use your terms. That's your main task. Don't worry too much. But yeah. then when I heard, uh, heard you talking about things, it kind of uh, activated this uh, almost like, uh, you know, I got to, if, if this person's, you know, I live in New York City. Suddenly someone comes and yells at me. People think that we're schizophrenic or that we're teaching you how to be schizophrenic because on the one hand we say, you are a deliberate creator. Be the creator of your own reality. And then we teach the art of allowing. You get into the place where you receive it. And you say, Abraham, what do you want from me? Do you want me to get specific about what I want and script it and intend it? Or do you want me to just accept that it's already done and just allow it to flow in? And we say, the answer to what you do when is about whether you are in a state of resistance or a state of allowance. If you're in a state of resistance, you let it go because you're not helping yourself. If you're in a state of allowance, then you turn on the gas, you turn on the juice and you get more specific because it's more fun. It's way more fun to be specific than it is to be general. But if being specific makes you not believe, then it doesn't feel good. And that's what the beauty of your inner being is. Your inner being knows exactly where you are on your path of least resistance. And your inner being is calling you around that resistance, over it, under it. There's no right answer. No one can write a book and say, under these conditions, do it just like this. Because the combination of the beliefs that you hold, that's why we started today with the conversation about, are you certain or are you uncertain all the way along the way? Because how you feel really informs what you do next. If you feel negative, then release, 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 release. If you feel positive, then point and point and point and point and point. It really is like that. I want to tell you a Neil Donald Walsh story. So Esther has a very good friend, a couple, and they were interviewing him for a project that they were doing. And they were in a city in Canada, and they had a book they wanted him to sign. 
And so they went to him and they handed the book to the Conversations with God Man. And he took the book and he looked at them and he took the pen in his hand and then he looked upward for a long time. And they're thinking, ah, oh, he's talking to God. <laughs> and he's going to write a message for us in the book. And then he said, nice meeting you here in Toronto. Love, Neil. And they realized he was thinking, Toronto, Edmonton, <laughs> Montreal, Quebec, where, where am I? He's a good friend of Jerry and Esther's. And they had an experience with him one day where they were on the telephone and they were both complaining about an experience that they'd had with someone else for just a moment, just a brief complaint. And he was complaining to them. And then he stopped and was quiet. And then he said, but you know, and then he spewed this stream of positive aspects about his experience. And Jerry and Esther said, really nice visiting with you. We love you. Take care. We'll talk to you later. And when they hung up, Jerry said, first we were talking to Neil, then we were talking to God. <laughs> nice. <laughs> really cool. Yeah. You are complete. One more little thing. Yeah. Um, the emotional scale thing, I feel like I've experienced many sudden shifts from deep negativity to clarity. Not... Not more often than the gradual stuff, but that's just happened. That's happened in my journey. You know and you why? Hear about that stuff. You know why? Yeah, go ahead. Because the desire is so strong. When you want something a lot, it doesn't matter what you believe because your inner being is so hooked into your desire. And so when you really, really, really want it, those big shifts can take place. That's what we are expecting about this conversation. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. Honored to meet you. Yeah. Thank you. The stairs are here if you prefer them, a railing and everything. Take it easy. There you go. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next